Hi, Lou here, and I'm going to talk about my experiences at the World Board Gaming Championships, rather grandiosely titled, that I recently attended. I'm about a thousand miles from home, but you can still do things with a computer, of course. Well, why do I go to a convention in general, or WBC in particular? Now, WBC is organized as a large number of tournaments. You pay a single fee and then you can play in all the tournaments you can fit your time into. Um, and many of the games that are played are old games, like there's a Britannia tournament. And many of them are fairly new games. But I don't go to conventions to play games because I've always said, well, you know, I can play games at home. I don't need to play them at a convention. Of course, some people who go to the convention don't have the opportunity to play them at home. And so they might play Britannia a few times at the convention and then not play it again for a year until they go to the convention and play Britannia again. So I have eliminated the, the main reason probably that most people go to conventions because if they don't go to play the tournaments, then they go to play the open gaping, gaming, which is held in an enormous place, and there's a very large library of games for people to play. One of the reasons I do go is to see people that I know and have known now for many years from going to the tournament, and especially the Britannia tournament. Um, and one in particular who's the GM, who I've become good friends with, and uh, we talk during the year by Zoom, and then we meet at uh, one or two conventions. Another reason is to talk to game vendors, publishers. But since I'm kind of semi-retired from that, that doesn't take up much of my time. And where I do talk with them, it's to pick their brains about how the business works, even though I know I'm not going to go into the business of publishing games, especially not at my age. Nonetheless, I find this interesting and spend several hours talking with some of them who I've known for a while. Another reason would be to play test games. And I have brought games over the years that have been play tested, uh, especially my, by my buddy, the GM, who often can't actually get into the Britannia tournament because the wrong number of people turn up. And we play some of my uh, cooperative games and so on, and he seems to like my games, which makes it quite good. Now, this year, it was a little weird, because another of the relatively minor reasons why I go to WBC is to go to the auction store. In the auction store, a lot of people submit games, and they have three prices on them for 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 1 p.m., on the day of the auction store, but they leave the stuff out so people can go look at it beforehand. And then you can go in, look at the games, and if you want to pick one up at the current price, then you can buy it. Or you can wait and come back in an hour or two and the price will be lower because the price keeps going down. And of course, it's sort of a gamble whether somebody else is going to take it first. Well, I go there not to collect games, but to find pieces. And uh, my biggest find, which I think was probably at WBC, was a couple copies of uh, a RPG-related game that had ships in it, Mediterranean-style ships, maybe less than an inch long, but they could also double as Viking ships. And so I bought two copies of that game at $20 a piece to get those pieces. And I've used some of the other pieces that were in the game as well. Well, this time I found Twilight Imperium first at $30, and this is the initial price. And then I found a really beat up one, which I think was a f one that has been retired from the uh, game library for 25 bucks. So I didn't care about the condition of the rest of the game. I just cared about the pieces. I bought the one for 25 bucks that had hundreds of plastic space warships in it. So I did that, and then I said to myself, what am I going to do with these plastic warships? So I designed a game to use them. 
and it was relatively easy to design because I used uh, a lot of rules from other games I've designed. And uh, I couldn't make a board very well, but I had a board with some hexes on it, and that's what I wanted. It wasn't big enough, but it, I tried it, and it turned out that my friend thought the, it was big enough, whereas I think it's maybe too small. So if the game is ever published in any way, it will have a bigger board that has a smaller area marked off, so you can do it either way. Anyway, so I made this game up, and uh, I played it, and he helped play it, and then, then the second time we played against each other. The second time, I had already written the rules, and this is quite unusual because normally I try to play test the game a fair bit before I'm writing the rules. But I had the time, and I had the interest, and the rules are less than 1,500 words, so it's quite simple. So now I have a game called Irrelevant Space Battles. I thought about that title after the convention. And irrelevant because there's no bigger strategic picture or anything like that. It's just a space battle. But that's something that people sometimes like. And uh, I've thought of some scenarios to add to it and so on and so forth. It's not commercially viable, I don't think. In other words, I don't think publishers would be very interested in it. But I may uh, issue it as a print and play game, or perhaps something through uh, the Game Crafter, and say to people, well, I provided cardboard pieces or paper pieces, but you, if you have Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition, can use the Twilight Imperium ships and have a much better looking game, although it's going to play just the same way. Kind of weird, but that's what happened. And I have in mind many other possible irrelevant such and such battles, such as irrelevant uh, real, relevant Second World War battle using Axis and Allies pieces. Who knows? Thanks for listening.